Uh, this is a Cat 416C backhoe, and I want to show you something. Whenever you're working on something on the engine like that, today what we're going to work on is this piece right here because it's leaking really bad. You have to get the bucket out of the way. So most backhoes and other machinery that have a bucket come with a device like this, this red bar. What you do is extend your bucket all the way. You put this red bar down over your hydraulic cylinder like that. Put the pin in place to keep it there. And it goes flat against your, the bottom of your cylinder. And then on the top, it hooks in. Let's see if I can get a good shot. Just like that. Right up underneath the uh, cylinder bar. So you never work on a device like this unless, you're, um, unless you have everything stabilized where you're sure it won't fall and cut off your neck or your head or whatever. So... We're going to replace that. We have the new part right here in the box. And uh, we're going to take it out and look at it. Make sure it's the same thing. It looks identical. It's got uh, one, two, three, four, five intake holes on it. So until I put it on, I'm going to keep it in the bag and in the box just so I won't get it dirty. We're going to take the old one off and put the new one on. So let's get to it. And don't start a project like this unless you have plenty of wrenches. So the fuel line comes into this, goes through this fuel and water separator, and then to the uh, cylinders in the engine. Usually I tell people if you're going to replace something, if a part wears out and you're going to replace it, go ahead and buy two. But this is, on this one I don't say that because this piece is a uh, hundred dollars. So you might not want to buy two of that. And these lines, you don't want to bend those too much because if you break that, you know, you have to probably order another one, which will set your project back a week at least. You know, nothing ever breaks until you actually get started working on a project. I'm working on uh, fixing a culvert today. And of course this would have to break right as we get started. The best part about doing a project like this is that your hands get covered with diesel and oil and you can't hold your tools. Okay, weekend number two on the backhoe. Um, we started on this last weekend replacing that part right there. I got one in my hand, this is the old one. It was leaking on the back side for some reason diesel's pouring out we can't figure out why anyhow we got stopped because um when i bought the part they didn't give me something i needed if you can see down in that hole right there there's a little black uh it's called a ferrule it's some people call it a washer or a grommet or something like that i'm holding this uh, fuel filter in my hand because there's diesel in it but um there's another one right down in that hole well they didn't give me any for the new one because the uh, Caterpillar drawing that has these things in it didn't have it on there. So I had to go back to the uh, Caterpillar place and um, they gave them to me and there they are right there. They were, um, that little ring is a dollar and 50 cents each. I needed three of them. So I lost a week of doing work on the farm because I didn't have the right um, ferrules to put in that fuel filter and uh anyhow i'm going to get back on that we're going to get that fixed i want to show you something else 
my wife and daughters and son were good enough at Christmas to give me a new tool kit because I'm always complaining. They're, I always seem to be missing just the socket or just the wrench I need. That's just like some some rule, or some universal law of tools. You miss the piece you need the most. So they went and got me this cobalt tool kit at um, Lowe's, which seems like a great idea because these drawers slip in here, or they're supposed to slip in just like that. And um, they'll go in there. But you, you see the problem? When I push it in, the tools look like they're okay. Let me get this thing back out of here. But whenever you push the drawers in or pull them out, this piece comes loose. So the tools look like they're all right, but I think Lowe's sells a lot of these cobalt tool kits because, you know, people think, oh, great, I'm getting tools and a toolbox all in one. Well, you're really not because this is just junk. This will not stay in here. So I'm going to have to figure out how to fix this. And these drawers, even, even if the whole box is put together just perfect, these drawers are not a perfect fit for the slots on the side. The slots are still too wide. So I end up pushing real hard, which is what uh, I think broke this. And these clips on this cobalt tool kit are made out of such thin metal that this little piece my fingers on, the first time I, I unlatch this, this bent and now it won't latch right. So if you're looking for a tool kit, um, I recommend buy, you can buy the cobalt tools for half the price of dewalt or craftsman but don't buy it because you get a tool kit with it just buy the tool set without the box and then just go buy yourself a decent toolbox so you see now all my drawers of tools not now this is nice the tools do snap in the drawer and they actually hold pretty good so um and we got deep sockets and i got a, i got shallow end deep sockets and i use the deep sockets a lot so i really like them but uh if you buy this, go ahead. If you buy tools, go ahead and buy a separate toolbox to put them in, and don't count on this 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 trash that you get, this cobalt trash you get. Um, and I took this thing back to Lowe's and I showed them to them, showed it to them, and they said, "Well, you can just go get another one." But if I got another one, it would break apart too. So I'm just going to go and buy a decent toolbox, keep the tools in these trays, put them in the box, and I'll be good to go. And then I'm going to figure out what to do about that, get rid of that thing. So anyhow. Back to the backhoe. Here we go. Oh, one more thing about the cobalt toolkit. Hey, you know, at least they gave me a nice sticker. Okay, so I can just, before I throw this away, I'll put the sticker on, so, okay. Yeah, and here's another problem with this cobalt toolkit. I like the, I like the tools. The tools seem to work good. They last, you know, I've had cobalt before. They last for a while. I like the variety they give you. I just don't like the box, but here's a, another big problem. If you're like me and you get a new tool kit and you go to the farm, you think, you know, I've got some new tools, now I can do some work. Here's the problem. You can't pull these little bits out with your finger. It's, it just won't work. I mean, some of the bigger bits like that, I can pull them out with my finger, but the little ones I can't. And there's, no, there's not a set of pliers in here. There's no sort of extraction tool. So if you don't have a pair of pliers, you can't pull these things out. So cobalt should have, thought that out maybe and put it put like um you know a set of pliers or something in here to let you pull the tools out or pull these bits out so there you go cobalt do that yeah and another thing why is it that every time i get ready to work one of my tools breaks i had to cut some trees and do some other stuff first pull my line broke in the chainsaw i don't get it you know when my tools are sitting in the shop doing nothing on the workbench they work fine okay but when i get them out and i try and work with them something always breaks is that murphy's law or what is that so to get this off i have to um i have to unscrew that line that line actually this this piece comes off all these lines don't have to come out and take that off so i gotta take that out that out that out that out and uh these two bolts back here, so it's sort of a pain in the butt, but um, you have to get this piece off before you can put the ferrules. They, they actually snap in inside this housing. So before you can put that on, you have to take this off because if you try and put them on and you can't, you don't have a clear view of it and you put them in crooked, they're actually gonna get in the flow, line, flow of the line. They're gonna Im impair the flow. So you have to put them in right. So I just gotta take this thing back off. And of course it's 34 degrees outside. So that helps. All right, let's get to work. 
Okay, I got the filter assembly off. So what I've got to do is put these little grommets, or I'm sorry, ferrules, right in there. Let's see if I can do this one-handed while I'm holding the camera. So here's the ferrule. It goes in that little hole just like that. You gotta push it. The mechanic at the Caterpillar place said, make sure you push it until it snaps in there. And I don't feel it snapping, but I'm scared to push it too far because I don't want to damage the ferrule. So we're gonna go with that. I think when I tighten it down, it'll snap in place. So those two are in and I put one in right there. So we're gonna put it back on and see if it works. Okay, I got the fuel assembly back on, and uh, let's see, double check everything. That looks good, good. That's good, good, good. That's good, that's bolted on. Cap's on good. Um, okay, it's time to crank it up. As they say, this is the moment of truth. So let's see, over here, I got the jump battery plugged up. So, uh, there's the bucket. All right, let's do it. Let's see what we get here. Come on and crank, baby. Move the air breather assembly out of the way. All right, get my screwdriver. I'm sorry, I meant get my key. Put it in there, give it some gas. Crank it up, come on. All right, let's see if, it's, see if it's leaking now. Okay, it didn't run long enough to leak. Let's do that one more time. Oh, you know what? Let's give it a little squirt of uh, magic fluid. There you go. A little starting fluid there. All right, come on and crank up back, ho. Oh, you know what I want for Christmas next year? I really like a new backhoe, or um, if that's asking too much, maybe a skid steer. All right, come on, let's crank up. Come on, you can do it, crank it up. All right, All right let's see. No leaks, come on, no leaks. I don't see any leaks. That's looking good. Alright. Make sure there's no fluid on the back side. Okay, now let's get back to the bridge. 